Shala bagan diria zai. Mazoka babosu. Riba bo shalaba. Rabba zo kalaba. Rima kalayan dorowa. Riba solo bo shada. Rima kaya zo kata. Riba sholo kozoka. Rima kashandi. Mayan dorobo zoka. Riba babo shalaba. Rabba zo kalayan dorolo. Yereria shandara. Makarian doroba. Riba babo shata. Mazoka Rabba Shanda Ribayando Mazaka Rabaganda Rima Koyandu Riba Zoka Laganda Rabba Shataraba Rako Basata Mashanda Riando Ribu Sukalayande Mashaliando Roba Mako Zoka Raba Rabba Boshata Rabba Zoka Layazata Rabba Kalakabosha Raka Babosa Tarianta Makayando Roboza Mashala Babosa Asha Tararabaganda. I worship you, Lord. O Jehovah, Mabo Zataraba, Rababa Bo Shata, Rabazo Kalabaza, Shalabazo Kalabada, Makalama Shandariaganda, Rebaso Kalabosha, Rabako Zalabahanda, Rebakashalaganda, Makoya Bozata, Rebako Shata, Rabazo Kalaba, Rabashata Raba, Rakabasa Kalagata, Makarabo Shata, Remazo Kalaba, Makaya. Makashala both Rimaziando Reba Baboza Shala Baboriato Rabako Shalaganta Rima Kayante Riba Makashala Antoroba Reba Babo Shata Rabba Boso Kalaba Makashalaganta Rabba Babo Soka Shatala Babosa Makayaziata Reba Boshika Makayando Rema Kozoka Babosa Rekobo Shalagasata Rabba Babolia Kamasia Turagaseta Yeke Babo Rima koyando roboza, mashalama bozoka, rababa boshata, rakabozaka, makalama zoka, rebaba boshata, rababo rianta, makaya zekata, rebaba boshata, rababa, makayando roboza, rima kolobo sheka, rekabo zekala yaseta, makarayanta rala. Thank you, Jesus. I bless your name. I thank you for this morning. Oh, Shabaganda Riaza. Thank you for your power, Lord. Makurobo Shakaraganda. Thank you for your glory. Ribo Shataraboza. Imaka Shalaganta Raboza. Mashalamabasi Yakayara Babosi. Ye Kamakala Yasukiriata. Makaramanto Robabo Shata. Reba Zokabo Zatalaba Shata. Rababa Basa Kalaba Shata Lalababa. Makarama Zokalaba Shalagan Salabusata. Thank you, King of all glory. Blessed be your holy name. I exalt you. I worship you, King of all kings. There is none like you. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, God. Blessed, blessed be your name. Thank you, King of all glory. Thank you, Lord. I thank the Lord for this morning that he has given us. God bless you so much for being here. Today is on Monday. I want us to begin with prayer, and I know that you shall be blessed. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you. I bless you for who you are. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for this great opportunity that you've given us all those this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare your power, O Lord. I thank you for the oil that you've given us, O Lord, the oil of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for empowering us this morning. Thank you for the grace of God. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, O Lord. I thank you for the fire that is burning in us. Help us to maintain this fire, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus Christ. That may we go to a higher level, King of all glory. I thank you for your children who are here watching right now, O Lord. Those who are going to watch later on, I place them into your humble hands, King of all glory. I thank you because there's nothing that is impossible with you this week. Even as you are about to begin this service, I declare, O oh Lord, may your glory be seen, O oh Lord. May you uh, be able, O oh Lord, to meet your children. May they have a divine encounter with you, O oh Lord. As we purpose to begin this week, O oh Lord, we dedicate everything unto you, our families, O oh God, our nation, O oh God, our lives, King of glory, our marriages, our children. I thank you because may you continue to walk before us, O oh Lord. I thank you, Master Redeemer. As we continue for this one hour, you're going to be here. I thank you because you're coming out with your blessings, and I thank you because your word, O oh Lord, is going to uh, come into our spirits and the Holy Spirit is going to enable us oh God, to receive this word with the grace that you've given us through the word of God, the power that is in the word of God, the truth that is in the word of God, oh Lord. Thank you because your words are spirit and they are life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we believe and pray. Amen. 
so i want us to thank us so much for being here and i want to thank the lord for the grace that he has given us for us this morning because our god is very mighty he's very powerful and he has enabled us to be here in the name of jesus christ so uh i want us to begin and uh, today we need not meet at the normal hours that you get to meet that is at 12 a.m uh, because uh, it was not possible for me, but I thank the Lord. So I am here this morning. It's around uh, 8 a.m. Uh, it's something. It's going tonight, but I thank the Lord for the victory. So God bless you so much, and uh, I want us to begin in the name of Jesus Christ to be able to receive what the Lord has for us because God has something for us. So for those who have been following the live sessions, God bless you, and uh, I know that the Lord is going to bless us equally as well this week. So God bless you so much for coming in. So today, we are going to continue with the topic that we began uh, on the, the, the other Monday that you are here. And uh, I thank God for his grace because you have been empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit. And our God is very faithful. And he's the one that sustain us, sustains us in this walk of life. Because we can do nothing without him. We can do nothing without the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is why. When he left, he told the disciples, don't go, go up to the upper room and I'm going to fill you with my Holy Spirit. And their lives were actually transformed from that time. And till today, we actually get to read the verse in the book of Acts chapter 2 uh, from verses 1 to 6 about what happened to the disciples after they received the Holy Spirit, how their lives were, were transformed, how the lives of the people were transformed, how the life of the church was transformed by that particular event so i thank the lord because this is uh, something that we ought to talk about and it's very important as a church to let uh uh the the church sorry to be controlled by the holy spirit not by men of course by men who are empowered of god but who are being led by the holy spirit so we're going to continue so the other week on monday we talked about speaking in tongues and specifically read from the book of acts chapter 2 and we are not uh, leaving that topic. We are still there. But you're going to look at something different. And now, uh, today we're going to look at the book of uh, Habakkuk, chapter 2, from verses 2 to 3. Uh, there's something that God has for us uh, this morning. Now, if you have your Bible, mine is King James Version. I'm going to read something from there. And I'm going to explain it uh, by the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, Acts... Uh, uh, Habakkuk chapter 2 from verses 2 to 3 it says this that uh, and the Lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it verses 3 for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it shall speak and not lie though it tarry wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry now, if you go back to the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 6, remember, uh, the Lord had actually told the disciples that they need to help, they need to wait uh, for the helper, they need to wait for the comforter, that even if he was leaving, he was not going to leave them alone. Of course, there's somebody else that was going to come and was going to be in his position. And for that to happen, the disciples had to wait. They did not know what the experience was, was to be like. They didn't know what... Uh, to expect but the lord jesus christ told them actually you need to wait for the helper that is going to come and when he comes he's going to lead you into all truth uh he's going to enable you to speak the words that i want you to speak he's going to enable you to walk in power you're going to be filled by the power of god and you're going to be able to actually do what i've left you to do while you're still here so they did not know what to expect but they were expectant to be able to be used of God, to be able to go to another level, to be able to, even though Christ was living and they were sad about it. But the Lord said that he was not going to leave them like that. So if you look at the book of Acts chapter 1, before I explain the book of Habakkuk, Acts chapter 1, we're going to go back there. And uh, verse 7 is, uh, uh, verse 6 specifically says that, um, verses 8 so it says that but ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is going to come upon you and you are going to and you're going to be witnesses you are going you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth so the promise was there and uh they had to wait upon that promise 
because this is something that was given unto them and so they were expectant they anticipated something that was uh so uh powerful but even if they had not received it yet they took in their instructions and they waited upon the lord so that the lord could actually fill them and so that they could actually deal do what god had purpose for them to do and so that they could actually walk in the righteousness of god as they were still here because there was so much that they needed to do. And that is what the Lord expects us to do. That when the Lord says something upon your life, or when the Lord has promised something upon your life, it surely must come to pass. And that is what we've read from the book of Habakkuk. Now, the book of Habakkuk, we've read from verses, uh, chapter 2, from verses 2 to 3, and it says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that ye may run and read of it. Verse 3, for the vision, yet it, it is for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall surely come. It will not tarry. Now, it is not an easy process. Waiting upon the Lord is not easy, whether it is in the spirit or is in the physical. Anything that has been promised upon your life might take time, some time. It might not happen today. It might not happen tomorrow. It might not happen a few months from now. But God has his hour of visitation. God has the day and the time that he has planned to visit you at his own season, at his own time. And he does things the way he wants to do them because he is God. So the only thing that we are required to do is to pray over the blessings that, the God, that our God has promised upon our lives. But the most important thing that you need to understand is that when it comes to the blessings of the spirit, like you are talking about speaking in tongues and the book of Acts, the Lord actually promised them. And he knew that he could not leave them without leaving the comforter with them, without leaving uh, uh, the, the person that we actually take control upon their lives until the time Jesus Christ came back. So it was not an easy process. They were left with the instructions and they were told, you need to wait until the promise comes so that you can proceed with the work that I'm leaving for, uh, that I've left for you to do. You have been with me. You've been my disciples, but I have to leave so that, I can allow the Holy Spirit to work in you so that you can do the work that I've left for you to do while you're still here on earth. And we can see that they were able to do so much in the kingdom of God. So like we said, and we began saying, we began saying that uh, speaking in tongues is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It is a gift, a special gift that the Lord gives his children, those who have understood uh, what it means to walk under the grace of the cross. Those are the only people who can understand what you're talking about today. So it is a gift. And that is why when we say that you're speaking in tongues, it means that it is a gift from the Holy Spirit and it, it is a sign of an empowerment for us. Because if you looked at the life that the disciples lived after being empowered, after being fed, it was totally different from before. The, uh, from before while they were with Jesus Christ. We actually see them actually being able to move on actually being able to do greater things, actually moving in faith, actually moving in the hand of God, actually moving in the power of God. So today, we want to talk about this scripture that talks about Habakkuk. We've not left the topic of speaking in tongues. We need to understand that waiting upon the Lord is very important. Now, before the Lord actually does something upon your life, of course, you have to read the word of God. There is a promise. Something has to be written. And we ha always have to follow the word of God. If he says that I'm going to do this because you're in the space right now, he's going to do it. But the thing is, it's going to take some time. But even if it takes some time, as long as you have read the word of God and have understood that this is something that was written for the sake of the church. And this is something that I have to follow up on until I receive what the Lord had purpose for me to receive as a child of God, as a daughter of God, as a son of God. And that is why we are here. And I know that as we proceed, that the Lord is going to help us, is going to empower you, is going to empower me. And remember we said when we are here last week on Monday, that it is a gift that the Lord gives his children. So even if you have not received it through prayer, because we always get to pray so that we can receive, and it is important for us to desire to receive uh, speaking in tongues, we need to know that it is the Lord that gives us the gifts through his Holy Spirit. It is the Lord that gives us this gift through his Holy Spirit. So what are we supposed to do? 
We know that it has been written in the word of God. But because it has been written in the word of God, and we talked about the vision and waiting for the appointed time, we need to realize that the timing of God is there. And the seasons of God are there. That is why people are being filled in a different way, at different hours, at different seasons. But the season of God is always there. The hour of visitation of the Lord is always there. That is why in the book of Acts, we actually realize the disciples were given specific instructions towards this vision. They were given specific instructions. Wait, tarry, go into the upper room, go and pray there. I myself am going to fill you. I'm going to show you my power and I'm going to uh, empower you and your life is going to change from that day in the name of Jesus Christ. So that is where we are. And one of the things that happens before uh, we receive something special from the Lord, maybe it is if it is a gift, let us talk about spiritual matters. When the Lord has actually planned that you are going to receive something, he actually prepares you in advance. Why am I saying that? The disciples were being prepared. The Lord told them somebody is coming. There is a helper that is coming. So the disciples were actually prepared in advance. So they, they did not sit around. They had to wait patiently with an expectation because Christ told them, I have to leave. But somebody else is coming and is going to empower you. He's going to fill you. He's going to show you so many things while I'm not here. In the name of Jesus Christ. So preparation is actually very, very important. That is why if you are going to receive the gifts of the Spirit, we need to pray. We need to see God, especially when you realize, I feel like the Lord is about to do something in my life. So what do I do? I need to prepare myself to ensure that I am waiting upon the vision. I have to tarry. I have to follow the instructions of the Lord to receive what the Lord has for me. And that is what happened in the lives of the disciples. Remember when we were here last week on Monday, I said that, or we said that, um, the Lord loves us so much and he knows we are in the last days. So we need to walk in power, in the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to walk in the ways that the Lord wants us to walk so that we can receive from him. So uh, we say that it is a gift. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that even and even though you are not speaking in, the, in tongues yet, that it means that you are actually a sinner. And it means that you are not going to see God. That is not true. That is just a gift that the Lord has given us as a church to empower us so that we can be able to uh, do the things of God or the works of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Now in the book of uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, I'm going to read it again from verses 2. It says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables, that he may run that read it. Verses 3, For the vision yet it is at an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Wait, tarry, wait for it because it shall surely come, it will not tarry. So I also had to wait and I had to wait for a long time. But I had to keep on going back and pray and tell the Lord, you cannot leave me this way. I needed to keep on seeking the Lord because in my heart and in my spirit, I knew that I have to keep seeking the Lord. I had to wait. I need you know I, I i used to see people being filled i used to see people walking in the power of god in the hand of god i used to see uh fellow brethren how their lives changed from one level to another level after being filled and after speaking in tongues but i had to wait i had to pray for it and i remember there was a time that a very a, a friend of mine some time back told me that God was going to actually do something. And I was going to be filled. But it was a very long time ago. So before it came, I had to wait. And I thought that, you know, this is just something that just telling me to encourage me. I, 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 I can't believe it. Maybe I'm not there yet. But it did come. And you need to realize there is something called waiting. And there is a process of waiting. And while we are, and while we are waiting, like the disciples wait, waited for it, it doesn't mean that God is not coming. It doesn't mean that the Lord is not going to feel it. It doesn't mean that the Lord does not care that you're actually, you've been toiling, you've been praying, you've been fasting, but you've not received the gift yet. The timing of the Lord is there. The hour of the Lord is there. The season of the Lord is there. And that is why in the realms of the spirit, if God is going to give you something, 
He prepares you before heart. He guides you to pray more. He guides you to fast more. He guides you to read his word more. He empowers you through faith and enables you to see there's something that the Lord wants to do. And I don't want to miss it, especially if it is the season that the Lord has actually planned for you to receive the gifts of the Spirit. Faith plays a very uh, important role. Now, the book of uh, uh, Jeremiah says that he knew us, Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 5, that the Lord knew you before you were born and before you were formed in your mother's bed. And that is very true because he's God, meaning that your destiny was created already in the spiritual realm. And the enemy knows that once a child of God, a daughter of God, or a son of God is filled and they receive the gift, some of the gifts that we have, but we're talking about specifically about speaking in tongues. The, 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 the man of God or the woman of God or the servant of God is going to be actually very fire in the realms of the spirit. Why am I saying that? Because you're going to be able to pray more. You're going to be able to see in the spirit more. The Lord is going to expound your mind. He's going to expound your spirit. The way you see things is going to be different. And that is why he doesn't want us to go to this level. He doesn't want us to be filled with the things, things of God. That is, that is why he doesn't want us to pray so much. He doesn't want you to seek God so much because he doesn't want you to go deeper in the realms of the spirit. Because if you go deeper in the realms of the spirit, your mindset is going to change. The way you view things is going to change in your family, in the nation, in the church, in your life. The Lord is going to give you more knowledge. He's going to give you more wisdom. You're going to understand things so much more. And that is why the enemy doesn't want us to receive some of these things. But he's defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. Because at this time and at this hour, because of what the Lord is about to do, in the whole world and because of the season that we are in because we are in this very delicate season and god wants to use the church he has lifted the church he has taken the church to another level he wants the church to walk in so much power he wants his voice to be heard amongst the nations he wants us to witness his power throughout the nations because you see sick people have to be healed people who have, have bad spirits have to be delivered people of the world or our families, or the nations have to see the power of God through us, through his servants, whomever is going to use, because they are honorable vessels that the Lord wants to use for his own glory, because he wants us, or he wants the people to run back to him. And that is very possible. And that is why you see, in the last days, the Lord is pouring out his spirit, so that young men can see visions, they can dream dreams, so that we can prophesy, and so that the work of the Lord can proceed, at the end of the day, Christ needs as many as he, as he can to come back to him. So like I say, a vision is something that is written. You wait for it. You, you hope for it. You desire for it. You don't know maybe at what specific time it might come. But because the Lord is faithful, he prepares us. The same way that he prepared uh, the, uh, the, uh, the apostles or the disciples, he told them, you need to wait. You need to tell the summer I need you to be at that time. Keep on praying. I am coming. And even though they didn't know the exact time, they were told where, where they were supposed to go, what they were supposed to do, at what time, and what they were going to receive. And after they received it, the power of God was there. The glory of God was there. And they just were changed and they were transformed to another level. And that is where we are going in the name of jesus christ the same way that you have expectations in your life the same way the things that you've been waiting for in your life we are all waiting for something not everything has been fulfilled in our lives but we have a vision you have a dream amen the things that you wrote down in the beginning of the year that you wanted to do and you had purpose to do you don't know how they're going to work out. don't know what what is going to happen. But it is a hope for you. Meaning, there's something that you're expecting. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is going to do it. Because when the Lord says he's going to do it, he's not like a human being. You know, most of the times, human beings can say, 
they can tell you things i'm going to do this i'm going to do this i have promised i'm going to do, but they can disappoint you because they are human beings but when the lord has promised something and he has written it written it in his word and you have been keen to ensure that you are doing what the lord does surely when that time comes when that hour comes the lord is going to prepare you in such a way that when he's ready to visit you you're going to be in the right place at the right time being able to receive what the lord has promised to receive you so that you can move forward with the blessing that the lord is going to pour in your life like i said it's not easy when we see uh, uh maybe fellow brothers and sisters receiving something that we don't have it might not be easy but it's not to say that you are down that is not we, if you look at it in that perspective then it's going to be very difficult for you to receive but if you look at it and say okay well i'm not here i'm not there yet but i'm going to keep on praying i'm going to keep on reminding myself of what the lord has said in his word i'm going to keep on telling the lord because this is something that you've promised your children because this is something that i need because of course the the battles that are there we are fighting against the world against the flesh against the enemy of the cross but the power of the lord is still there the hand of the lord is still there the glory of the lord is still there we are still preaching the gospel we're still seeing the move the mighty move of god in the nations because we are at the peak of the church we at uh we are at a certain wave a big wave that is coming and i'm praying that we are not going to miss the season in the name of jesus christ that the promises of the lord are true what am I trying to say this morning? That you need not to be discouraged. You need not to be discouraged because uh, at the end of the day, the promises of the Lord are true. That even if you we tarry and wait upon it, the same way the disciples are told to wait. They waited, they prayed, and they received something from the Lord and their lives changed. And that is what the Lord wants to do upon your life and my, upon my life. As long as we keep on seeking the Lord, as long as we keep on... Uh, uh, walking in his ways then he remains to be faithful and a spiritual gift is actually born in the spirit speaking in tongues is born in the spirit i remember the times when i kept on waiting upon the lord even if i was not there i could hear in the spirit it's like i'm speaking these things but they are not yet out in the physical they have not yet manifested i could understand that god wants to do something in my life god wants to empower me god wants to do something that maybe i've not understood at that point but i could feel in my spirit that something is being born in the spirit and that is what the lord does apart from him uh giving you specific instructions like i want you to pray i want you to do the word more i want you to concentrate on something that i want you to do and i don't want you to miss this season the same way that he did with the disciples is the same way with our lives before he comes he prepares you he tells you, this is where I need you. At this time, this is your season. This is what I want to do. And that is the same way the things of the spirit operate. They are born in the spirit before they manifest in the physical. They are born in the spirit. Words are spoken. Amen. Words are written in the word of God. It means that they're in the spirit. But before they manifest in the faith, you have to pray. You have to wait for it. You have to follow the instructions of the Lord. You have to concentrate on yourself and know that I can feel in the spirit that the Lord wants to fill me at this season. You might not know the day or the hour, but our God is very, very faithful to ensure that you receive the things of God and the hand of God in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that even if there is a delay, and the enemy does not want you to receive from the Lord. What the Lord has purpose to give you. As long as you put it in prayer. I am telling you our Lord is very very faithful to ensure that we receive the promises of God. It's not easy but we keep on waiting. We keep on turning to see the heart of the Lord. You know there are times when I felt like I was being delayed in the spirit. But I had to motivate myself frequently and remind god that i need this gift i'm waiting upon this gift i've been waiting up i need you to do something in my spirit i need to motivate myself i need to understand how does the lord work 
how does he speak to his people how is my life going to be transformed if i receive this because if you look at the giftings of god i'm talking about the gifts of the spirit that are in the book of corinthians clearly when we receive them our lives cannot remain the same but like i said they're gifts what is going to make us to go to the place where the lord promised us and he says that we need not to be afraid and you need to wait upon me upon him we need not to be troubled in our hearts is actually the righteousness of god living in holiness and in righteousness it's not a gift and like i said god has his season of his of visitation god has his period of visitations you know when you are not uh sometimes speaking in tongues sometimes you feel like you're afraid of praying yeah you feel like sometimes maybe if you pray the lord might not be hearing your prayer as much but that is not true because god says the prayer of a righteous man availeth much it's not the prayer of somebody who prays in tongues no it's the prayer of a righteous man availeth much there's something that i'm trying to get to us today this morning in the name of jesus christ the prayer of a righteous man yes we desire to be filled yes we need to desire to speak in tongues but remember this is a gift and because it's a gift the best that we can do is to keep on seeking the lord and telling the lord i am seeking you with my whole heart with my spirit with my mind and my soul and knowing that the same way you touch the disciples and their lives change and they receive tongues of fire is the same way that i am going to receive and i'm going to keep on praying i am going to keep on seeking my your face but don't let the hour that you plan for visiting me to pass me by in the name of Jesus Christ because if the promise is there you have to make sure that you are there at that time when the Lord needs you you have to be there where he needs you in the name of Jesus Christ and like I said and we've been saying that we talked about the book of Habakkuk and we said the first thing that we need to know is that a spiritual gift or something that is in the spirit is first of all born in the spirit Anything that we desire of the Lord must be born in the spirit before it manifests in the physical. And that is what happened to the disciples or the apostles in the name of Jesus Christ. Secondly, we are going to say this, that God has a season of visitation. So the same way that the apostles or the disciples receive speaking in tongues or when they, they receive the power of God or the Holy Spirit, they somewhere that they went. So God had his own hour they had to be at the right place at the right time doing the right thing they were in the upper room seeking the face of god worshiping the lord praying upon the lord in one spirit and in one accord and they received the gift so he has the lord has his own personal program he has his own personal calendar that is why there's a time we are born amen times and seasons belong to the lord and the season of visitation from the Lord is very, very important. It is very, very important. And that is why there's the inner voice. There's the, the, there's the inner voice. There's the way the Lord speaks to us. I don't know how it speaks to you. But there's a way that the Lord speaks to us. Especially when he is about to do something. And you've been seeking his face. You've been seeking. There's something that you've been seeking from the Lord. And you have just been praying. For the longest time, God has his season of visitation. And that is why when the Lord is about to do it, you may seem like you're crazy. You may seem like you're praying too much. People might not understand you, but they have not understood that your season has come. Your timing has come. There's something the Lord wants to, you to do, but you have understood it, but other people have not. And that is why they were the disciples who were told by Jesus not to leave Jerusalem until they receive the promise of the Father. And that is the Holy Spirit. That is the book of Acts chapter 1 verses 4. And then the act, in the book of Acts chapter 2, God says that on the day of Pentecost, the Lord actually visited them and made sure that they received the tongues of fire. So you've said, you're talking about speaking in tongues and you've talked about the book of Habakkuk about the vision though it tarry, wait it shall surely come to pass wait and we have said that there are things we need to look up to to, to, to talk about or uh, to uh, 
to actually look at. We said number one, a spiritual gift or a gift is something that is actually born in the spirit before it manifests in the physical. And secondly, we say that God has a season of visitation. We're talking about speaking in tongues. He has his, he knows what he does and how to do it. You might, he might feel you, you might just be in your bed and you start praying in tongues. It can be anywhere because he knows you need it. It can be anywhere because he knows what he's doing. He knows the hour. He knows how much you need this gift in the name of Jesus Christ. And not only speaking in tongues, but there's so many gifts that are there, but God knows how he's going to do it. At what time, at what hour, at which season and where you are. As long as you have received the power of God or the gift of God, that is the most important thing. We can keep on sharing this live stream and you're going to be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, thirdly, like I said, God will always prepare us in advance. God must prepare you. If he's about to do something in your life, God must prepare you. The same way that we said about speaking in tongues, God is going to prepare you. Why does he prepare you? Because he knows that I'm going to give you something as my son or as my daughter. And before you receive it, you receive it. I have to prepare you so that you can pray and prepare your spirit. So that you can fast and prepare your spirit. So that you can know that I am coming. So that you can actually be able to receive. Because the giftings that we receive or the things that we receive from God apart from speaking in tongues because there are so many things that we can receive from God of the Spirit. They require of us to prepare ourselves in advance. The Lord must make sure that you are ready to receive it. Your spirit must be willing. You must have enough faith to know that this is something that the Lord wants to do in the name of Jesus Christ. So apart from speaking in tongues, whatever it is that you're waiting of the Lord, you must know that there are processes. There is that particular process that the Lord follows so that you are able to receive God wants you to receive in the name of Jesus Christ. When a, one, a woman wants to give, is about to give birth, let me talk about that. She must be prepared. Amen. Because she knows she's carrying something very, very special. And because she's carrying something very special, she has to ensure that she eats properly. Amen. She has to go for the visits to the doctor. Amen. She has to ensure that uh, she uh, she's prepared uh, in finances. Amen. She has to prepare herself psychologically because the gift is on the way. Amen. There is something that she's carrying that is very, very precious. And she doesn't want to lose it. I don't know if you've ever met a woman who has just lost a child. It is a very, very bad period, a very bad season. Because if that woman was to lose that child, she realizes that she has actually lost something that is very important, something that is very special. And that is why the doctors always advise women. If somebody has to be on bed rest because of one or two reasons, they tell, they tell you, you have to be on bed rest because of one, two or three. Of If there's something that is wrong with the child, of course, you go into prayers, you go to the doctors and make sure that thing is fixed as soon as possible. So the same way, when a woman is preparing, because she has been traveling, she has been waiting maybe for a baby girl or a baby boy, whatever the gift is, she ensures that she does everything to make sure that the promise is not taken away by anybody because the enemy can steal is known to kill, steal, and destroy because he knows the destinies that are ahead of us. The woman must prepare herself. She must make sure that what the Lord has promised, even if it's going to pass, I have my own role to play to, play, to make sure that this promise comes to my hand. And I'm not going to let it go because this is something that the Lord has actually promised to give me. In the name of Jesus Christ. So that is the, the same way the things are in the realms of the spirit. Don't look at things normally. What the Lord has promised to give you. Know that it is always a battle. We always have to fight for things. We always have to go into warfare. Because nothing can just come into our hands just like that. The promise is there. It has been written. It is a vision. Though it tarries, 
it shall surely come to pass by the things that have to happen in between before you receive that promise in the name of Jesus Christ. So the promise is going to come. It has been written down in the, in the word of the Lord that this is something that I have to give my children. But remember, there must be preparation. The Lord has to prepare you. And even if he's going to prepare you, you have to make sure that you are ready for that promise in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the promises of God, even if they're true, even if they're going to come, we have to make sure that we are very prepared and that we are very ready to receive that promise in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not that to, it's not that to say that you're not going to receive it. No, but you have to pray for it. You have to fight for it. You have to desire it because you know what you are receiving. Even if it's not going to easy, even if it's not going to be easy for it to come into your hands, at the end of the day, it's going to come. But you have to also play your role in the name of Jesus Christ. So the same way, Jesus prepared himself and told his disciples, the comforter is coming. Prepare yourself. Make sure you're in your position. Make sure that your spirit is ready. Your mind is ready. Your body is ready. Be in the place that I want you to be in the name of Jesus Christ. It is different for everybody. Everybody has a personal experience. Everybody has, uh, there's a way that the Lord speaks to us. Everybody has their own personal experience. But my point is this, that everything that comes to us must be born first in the spirit. And number two, God has this season of visitation. And number three, God will always prepare us in advance. Meaning that even if God is going to prepare you, you have your own part. God has his own part to make sure that his promises are fulfilled and they surely are able to come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. We need to pray now. And this is a promise. It's not to say that even if you're not there, even if there are those who are already speaking in tongues, remember, there is something going to call going to a higher level. You still have to seek the face of God because the tongues always change. They are always changing. You cannot speak in one tongue like a holy. They are always changing. You always have to pray. Anything that comes from God cannot just be maintained just like that. You have to seek God. You have to seek God to another level. You have to desire to go to another level. And our God is very, very faithful because he says that his grace is sufficient in the name of Jesus Christ. So after the disciples received this gift, they told that Peter preached the gospel and said that may, uh, children of God need to repent and be baptized. And when he preached the gospel and told the children need to repent and be baptized, what happened? More than 3,000 came back to God. And that is what we need at this time. That we are saying that speaking in tongues is a gift of the Holy Spirit and we as the children of God are entitled to that. Is not complicated because Christ is willing to empower us at a season like this. Christ said that we would do more than he did. Christ said that this church will walk in more power. And that season is right now. That hour is right now in the name of Jesus Christ. So from wherever you are, from wherever you are, I want us to know that we are going to continue in this topic. And we're going to see the importance of speaking in tongues. And I know that God is very, very faithful. He is very, very faithful. Because when you need something from your father, let me begin with the physical one. You tell them that this is what I need. This is what they need in school. And uh, as long as you've told them, they're going to tell you, I'm going to give you. It, if it might take some time because maybe it's costly, they're going to tell you, wait on uh, uh, for some time. But I've had. And I'm going to give it to you because that is your father. That is your parent. And you are very sure when he says that I'm going to give it to you because he's your father and he has promised. You know, you're very sure he's going to give it to you. It's the same way in the realms of the spirit. If you're asking something from God and telling God, this is what I need. I've been praying over this. Yes, he can speak to you and tell you, wait, keep on praying. I'm going to give, you, give it to you, especially something that has been written, written in the word of God. It is the truth. It is a promise. Even though it tarries, it shall surely come to pass. And there are things that the disciples were told to do. So if you go back there and read the book of Acts, chapter 2, you, you're going to see, or if you begin from chapter 1, the things that they were told to do. And after doing them, 
And after waiting, the Lord finally came. What am I trying to say? We've talked about three things. For something to manifest, it must be born in the spirit. That is the first point we talked about. And you can see it in the book of Acts, chapter 1 and chapter 2. Secondly, you say, God has a season of visitation. When you're going to receive these gifts, he has a season of visitation. That's in Acts chapter 1, verses 4. The disciples of God told, go to the upper room, pray, wait for me, I'm going to come. And the Lord came. And they prayed, they were in unity, and they received what they were supposed to receive. And number three, you've said that God will always prepare us in advance, in the spirit. That is still in the book of Acts. They did, it did not just come. They had to be told to wait. They had to be told by Jesus to wait because he had to leave for the helper to come, for the comforter to come, for the spirit of truth to come. Now, the grace of God is sufficient. I don't know what you've been waiting for. For, from the Lord, apart from uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, apart from speaking in tongues and what God said about it, or what, what the Holy Spirit said about it. But know this, that whatever it is that we desire from the Father, God has his own way of doing his own things. And uh, he says that his thoughts are not like our thoughts. And uh, if you ask something from the Lord, and you've understood this is what I need from my Father, and you keep on digging. You keep on praying and asking the Lord, this is what I need. Wait for it. Follow the processes of God and understand it is always a battle in the realms of the spirit because the enemy doesn't want us to be filled. Like I said, he doesn't want us to dig deeper. He doesn't want us to seek the face of the Lord as much as we can. He wants us just to remain at that level without seeking the face of God, without being maybe... Uh, um having the heart of uh, probably wanting to know more, wanting to have more knowledge about the things of the Spirit, wanting to have more wisdom about the things of the Spirit, but he's defeated. As long as you've understood that this is where I'm supposed to be as a child of God, as a daughter of God, as long as you've understood that this is the level that I want to be and I want to really seek the face of God, then our God is very, very, very faithful. So we always get to meet on Monday and Monday is very important because you get to command your week. You get to tell the Lord, I am here. This is my week. And because this is my week, I want to ensure that whatever you plan for me this week comes to pass. I want to, you have to remember families. You have to remember our country. You have to remember yourself because remember that the word of God says we need to be sober. We need to be vigilant because the enemy is as as a roaring lion, looking for who that he might devour. That is the book of Peter. But as long as we are not ignorant of his schemes, and you are always seeking the face of God and understanding that the things of the Spirit are very, very important. You have to follow up on the things of God. I am telling you, it doesn't have a place. It doesn't have an opportunity in our lives, in our families, in the church, in our nation, in our children, because there's so many things you ought to pray for. But the thing is this, remember what the Lord has written in his word, specifically for his church, it is, it is the truth. Because the, the word of the Lord says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That's in the book of John chapter 8 verses 32. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So the same way that we need the gift of speaking in tongues and the same way that we see the lives of the disciples were transformed, that is what the Lord needs you to know this morning that your life will be transformed and the lord is there to transform us so that we are fully equipped to ensure that we progress and do the work that he has left for us to do while we are still here in the name of jesus christ so we want to go into prayer because the time has come for us to pray and i don't know what it is that we're waiting upon the lord from for whether it is uh, in the, uh, the spiritual matters or physical matters, but everything else must be born in the spiritual realm. Well, the things that we need are always born in the spirit. And that is why we must dig deeper. We must seek the face of God as much as we can. And we are going to win. We know that the Lord is very capable of enabling us. So God is very, very faithful. As long as from your heart, you're seeking the Holy Spirit and telling the Lord, 
this is what I need. The book of Habakkuk clearly, clearly confirms Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 2 to 3. The promise is there. The vision is there. Though it is, wait, it shall surely come to pass. And that is what the Lord is saying today. Spiritual matters shall surely come to pass. Remember, the, spirit, uh, the things of the spirit are born in the spirit. And even if the enemy tries to do whatever it wants to do, God is going to enable you. But you have to pray so much. Secondly, God has a season of visitation. And thirdly, God will always prepare us in advance in the spirit. Now, my prayer for us this morning, uh, as we begin this week, is that God is going to guide us in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits, that God is going to open our eyes in another level. We are going to be able to listen to what the Lord is saying in another level. That the plans of God are going to be fulfilled, but the plans of the enemy are going to be thwarted. They are not going to succeed. They are not going to give him any power in the name of Jesus Christ. So whatever the enemy has been planning or is planning this week must surely fail. It must surely fail because it does not have any power upon the children of God in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want us to go into prayer. And it's very important for us to command our week uh, this week and tell the Lord, here we are. Enable us, strengthen us, be with us, protect us. Uh, just show us the way. And it is the Holy Spirit that shows us the way. And that is uh, how it is in the name of Jesus Christ. So uh, I know that as you continue with these sessions, God is going to help us. And uh, we are going to receive what the Lord wants us to receive. And like remember, like we said, the more you seek God and the more you seek uh, his face and his power, the more he's faithful to receive, uh, to reveal himself to you. Because he can only reveal himself to us when we pray and we seek his face in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I want us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are here this week. Oh God, declaring your power. Declaring your power this week, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for your children wherever they are, oh Lord, this morning. And declaring that may your power locate them wherever they are, oh Lord. We have been in this series and we've been praying, oh God, upon speaking in tongues. And you know that it's a gift. But because you're faithful, today you've told us that we need to write that vision down, oh Lord. Everything that we write down, even though it tarry, you require us of us to wait, to seek your face, because it shall surely come to pass. Your promises are true. You're not like a human being, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, those who have purpose to receive from you and are still waiting upon you, I'm praying for them right now this morning in the name of Jesus Christ that you are going to empower them. You're going to equip them. You're going to enable them to understand your season. You're going to enable them to be able to uh, know that there's something being born in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to enable them, oh my God, to know that you're going to always prepare us in advance to us to know that there's something that you're doing in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. The same way the apostles were able to receive. Oh God, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that you're not going to leave us. That your children are going to have knowledge on this. They're going to be empowered. They're going to understand why it is very important for us to seek you in the realms of the spirit. To dig deeper. To see you, oh Lord. To hear from you. To understand the things of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you and I glorify your name this morning, this week that you have begun, oh my God. Thank you because your power is still working upon our lives. The, the sick are still being healed, oh Lord. Those who are possessed are still being set free by your power, oh my God. I thank you because Jesus, you're still working. I thank you because of the power of the cross. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare your power this week, oh God, upon our nation, upon our children, oh God. Whatever it is that you plan for us, oh God, may it surely come to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have given this us this hour, this season, and this period, oh my God, to be able to seek you. To understand you, oh Lord, through your word, oh God, through what you have been ministering through our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
Mashabaganda rabosi kayato re makoba shalaba rakaba re boso kalabo shandara bahanda ramasi alamahanda feel your children oh my god re kata rama kosha kalama hande re babozaya shalaba hando makoroboza re bababo shataraba gansika re kababo shalabosa rama koya sikina we will not be tired from seeking your face oh lord in the name of jesus christ oh masha Kata maliba zayan taraba bo riakata mashanda reba bo sokalaya kata yarabo shata that those who have been waiting upon you oh my God. I declare in the name of Jesus for those that have been born in the spirit the time has come for them to be able to manifest in the physical oh my god in the name of Jesus Christ raba shalaba makata re makolo bosheta re masi antoroba ganda ri baba bosheta re kabosi akayalaba mashanda malabo sokaraba handa that those blessings that you've kept for us oh god and the time has come for them to be born in the spirit i pray in the name of jesus christ that you are going to remember us remember your children every family oh my god the church and the nation oh my god in the name of jesus christ that things that are being born in the spirit and the time has come for them to many to be manifested in the physical i pray that you're going to open our eyes you're going to open our ears so that we prepare ourselves in advance for what you are about to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Rieke Taraba Shalaba Rabagat Soloto Robaganda Mashalabo Zaya. Though those who are going to be, who are waiting for you, oh God, upon the jobs, oh God. And you've released them in the in the name of Jesus Christ, in the spirit. That those who have been waiting, oh my God, for certain blessings my god and the time has come for them to re be released i am praying right now for them that you are going to enable them to see in the realms of the spirit that the time has come for them to receive from you in the name of jesus christ there are those who are waiting for their healing, but it is in the realms of the spirit. It has been released. Oh my God. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are those who are waiting for marriages, but then the spirit. The time has come for them to be released. Oh my God. There are those who have been waiting upon children. They don't have children, but in the spirit, the blessing has been released. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeliando, Rima Shanda Rabaganda, Marabosoka, Rama Kashataya, Rema Sikina. There are those who have been waiting for their ministries, but they have been released in the name of the Jesus Christ in the space. Re Kababo Shanda, Nalaboza, Re Babo, Shalaba, Rabasaya, Makayando, Re Makorianta, Re Babo Shaka, Re Kaboza, Re Makayazeta, Mashanda, Makarao, Re Kazata, Ieleba, Ielebo Shata, Re. Ma korobo saya. Malabozoka, Rema Koraba, Shalabaganda, Rema Zianda, Rema Kozaya, Rema Bosheka, Re Kabasaya, Re Kababosa, Re Kababoshata, Rema Kayanda, Rema Zia, Yelebosaya, Rakabashi Kalabaganda, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, Rema Sikina Lamahanda, Mashalaba Boria Bosa, Mashi Kayando. May those blessings let get them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Matolobosa, Rabazo Kalaba, Makalabaganda, Mashalababoria, Remasika, Rababoshata, Remasikina, Remakorobasika, Rabashata Labagando, Remasika Laboza, Shalabababoria Ganda, Raboso Kalabaganda. Our spiritual blessings are not going to be delayed in the name of Jesus Christ. Rekababosha, Remakorobasa. Mazoka Rabashalaba Ramazoka Remakoshala Rakabaza Ramazia Torobaganda O Mashalabaganda Remasia O Babosha Rebosoka Rambasikia Tayala Bazoya Remakonda Rabazoya We are not going to doubt your power, my God. Everything that has been written down, Jehovah, may it come to pass. Kotolobosoka Rebakosha Lagandarabosa. 
Rema Kozoka, Re Kababosha, Re Bazoka Laganta, Re Mashanaria, Re Mazoka Mabozaya, Re Mashanda, Re Mazoko Babo, Shola Baganda, Ramazoka, Re Kababoshata, Re Masekayaraba, Shandarianda, Re Bozo Kababoria, Masika, Re Makoyande, Re Kabosata, Re Bashata, Re Basekalaya Sata, Ie Kaziaraba, Mashala Mahanda, Rabosa Kalabo. Masilia Koroba Rabosia Kalayaza Yere Boshika Everything that has been written down, my God, for the sake of your church, oh my God. Everything that you've written in your word, and we have been toiling and tearing and praying for, oh my God, and has not come to pass, but has been born in the spirit. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, Mashikiria Kayanda Raboza, Ramashala Baganda. We are not missing our season, my God. We are not missing our time, my God. Our hour of visitation, we are not going to miss Jehovah in the name of Jesus Christ, Mashe Karabo, Rapaso Kalarabo Shata, Re Makoyando Roba, Re Kabo Shata, Re Masika, Makayando, Re Bababo Shata, Re Kabo Sota, Makalabo Sha, Re Bose Kalala, Makaranda, Mashanda, Maraboso Kalabo, Shalabahanda, Re Boseke, Re Kebo Sheke, Re Kabo Seta, Ye Shata, Re Karaba, Makarama Soya, Re Mashika, Re Masuka. Kalalabose, Mashiliazo, Malambasoka, Re Makoroboshika. We know the work of the enemy is to kill, to steal, and to destroy, my God. But he's not going to kill our destiny, O oh God. He's not going to kill our bad things in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Bashalabahanda, every prophecy that has been written upon your children's lives, O oh God, upon our church, oh my God, upon our nation, upon our destinies and our futures, may it come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Makaraba Shanda Marababo Sokarabo Shalaba Handa Ramazaya. Thank you, King of all glory. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Shia Karabaganda Raboza. Every wicked plan of the enemy, my God, is not going to succeed in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare the power of God. I declare the hand of God. Makaraba Shanda. Rebosi Kalabosaya. Re Makosha Labaganda. Every spirit of death, you're not our portion. Upon our family, upon our children, in the name of Jesus Christ. Ria Kabashanda Riaganda. Mariba Zaya, I declare life this morning. Mashe Kerobo, Remasi Kalabaganda, in the name of Jesus Christ. Mako Shatalabo, Nakaraba, Shalaba, Raba Sataraba Shika, Remakayanto, Rebosiki Akayanda. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every sick person, my God, I declare your healing this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. That those who are suffering from diseases, oh God, I declare your healing, my God. From mental illnesses, oh God, physical diseases, my God, spiritual illnesses, Jehovah. It is only you that can heal us and restore us and sustain us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rema Koshata, Rema Sokala Mahanda, you are faithful, oh God. Mashilia Soka, every arrow from the, from the enemies not going to succeed. I declare your power. Reba shalaba raba rabo siya karaba rema kashalaga rema sikiaza reba babo shalaba rema sikaya raba yelele boshika rima soya yala mando roba ziya mashalama hando reba se karaba makarama zo karama shika Oh my God. Every spirit of prayerlessness is not going to be a portion this week. In the name of Jesus Christ, we shall not fail to read your word. We shall not fail to serve you. We shall not fail to see of your goodness and power. We shall not fail to see what you're doing, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ganda Raboso, E Mashalayanda, Riazia Lamahande, Macarabosa, Malabosa, Macarabasia Carabo, E Casalabasa, Rababo Shalaba, Rabasia Raba, Macayanda Raba, Mashalababoria Gayarabo, E Rebo Sikiria Oh, my God, Masalama Hando. 
Rima kozoka babo shata. Rabaganda labosa. I declare the blood of Jesus upon our families this morning. Upon our nation, I declare the blood of Jesus. Oh my God, upon your church, I declare the blood of Jesus. Oh, Masia Karabaganda, upon your children watching this now, I declare the blood of Jesus. There are those who are in pain, I pray for your comfort. There are those, my God, who are struggling with finances, I declare, oh my God, that you are going to provide because silver and gold belongs to you in the name of Jesus. That those who are struggling in their marriages and the enemy has been trying, oh my God, to ensure those marriages don't start. But King of all glory, what you've started, oh my God, you say in your word, let no man put asunder in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my God, no form of wickedness, of wickedness shall succeed. This week, in the name of Jesus Christ, I dedicate this week unto you from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I dedicate them all to you, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. As we continue to seek your face, my God, we are not coming back empty. We are coming out with your power. We are coming out with your glory, my God. Remember every prayer item that has been presented this morning. Remember your children this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. May they walk in your power. May they walk in your glory. May they see you wherever they are, O oh God. We cannot do anything without your power. My God, continue to work in our hearts through the power of your Holy Spirit. May we not fail, O oh Lord. May we stand firm in your power, in your glory, knowing that you are fully well able to enable us to stand firm in these last days. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you. I bless your name. I worship you and thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, do you believe and pray? Amen. So I want to thank you so much for coming in today, this morning. This is not our hour, but you get to meet on Mondays from 12 a.m. But our God is very, very faithful. Thank you so much for following these sessions. Thank you so much for being with us. And I know that there is somewhere that the Lord is taking his charge. If you only continue... To believe in what he's doing. May we continue to walk in the power of God and in the hand of God. Like I said, what the Lord wants to do. If he wants to do it, it must be born in the spirit. Number two, God has his hour of visitation. Number three, God will always prepare us in advance for what he's about to do. The preparation is there. It must be in the spirit, the season of visitation, and it must be born in the spirit. May the Lord truly bless you for being here this morning and we are still on a race we are still running and i know that the lord is going to help us so we are going to meet on wednesday and we are talking about running your race that is the, the topic that we have uh the wednesdays that are going to be here the two three wednesdays that are going to be here and i know that uh the lord is going to bless us so i wish you a wonderful day wonderful morning afternoon i don't know what time it is in your home country but Remember, let's continue seeking the face of God because clearly there's something that the Lord is doing in his church and I'm praying you're not going to miss it. I don't want to miss it too, but we're going to continue to serve God. We are going to continue to stand where God wants us to stand until that his time comes. And I know that when his time comes, we are going to be fully prepared for what he wants to do in our lives. So uh, just be prepared for the Lord and continue to seek his face. Continue to pray and I know that he's very faithful. So what, whatever it is that you need from God, whether it is a job, whether you need the Lord to heal you, uh, you need the Lord to uh, for financial breakthrough, there's something that you're going through in your marriage, there's something that the enemy is doing, remember he has no power. The only thing that we can do as children of God is to believe, pray and trust that God has already done it in the name of Jesus Christ. We have not been called to suffer, we have not been called to go through uh all of these things that are going through for the rest of our lives. The hour of God is coming. God is coming. And I know that he's very well capable of taking you from that point and lifting you to another level. He says in his word, in Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 5, that he says that he knew you before you were formed in a mother's womb. That is very powerful. You were known. Before you were around in the spirit, you were known that you were there. So let us just continue in the service of the Lord. Let us continue to pray for one another. Let us continue to stand in our positions and clearly the Lord is going to enable us and he's going to give us the strength and the grace to be able to get to our destiny. So this is my Facebook page and uh, it's Revival Sister Betty. I'm glad to see you this morning and I'm um, praying for you and I know that the Lord is going to do it. You can also uh, log in into my YouTube channel, same name, Revival Sister Betty, see what the Lord is doing and I thank God because we are growing 
and there's somewhere that the Lord is taking us. And I know that God is going to continue empowering you while you continue these services. Your life cannot remain the same. There's something that the Lord is going to do. Continue following on with the services. See what the Lord is doing. And remember, we are not following human beings. We are following Jesus Christ. We are following in the footsteps of Christ. We are following what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell his church. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. So, have a blessed week. Have a blessed morning. Thank you so much for being here. And may the Lord truly bless you and remember you. Everything that you've been praying for and asking the Lord to do, may he do it according to his own will and according to his own purposes. So see you on Wednesday from 10 a.m. up to 11 a.m. for the word of God. And we are talking about running your race and what the Lord expects us to do so that we can get to your destiny or so that you can get to the place that the Lord wants you to get in the name of Jesus Christ. So be blessed. Uh, thank you so much. God bless you so much. And I'm going to share this live stream uh, as soon as I'm done so that other people can also receive the blessings of the Lord. So thank you so much. Shalom, shalom. Thank you so much for watching. Be blessed. And I thank the Lord for you and for what God is doing in your life. Don't give up. Continue. Soldering on. Persevere. Uh, be tolerant and see that, uh, be sure that the grace of God is going to work in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. I'm blessed. Be blessed too. In Jesus' name we do believe and pray. Amen. Thank you so much.